Okay, we're rolling. What's up, guys? Compound Coalition. I am here with Evan Dixon. We are here a day or two after Self Reliance Festival number six. And uh, I think Evan has some shit to say. Sure. Say it. What? I don't know. What well, do you let's go. Come on. Time's burning. Things are good. Things do look good. They look really I mean, good for you. I'm enjoying my life. Would I was you... actually just reflecting on how much has changed since I was last sitting here. How long have you been doing the radio thing? That Like for business? March is when I went full time. I'd started it the previous July is when I had the idea. So a little over a year from idea to now, and then so six it, months of real like the real thing. Is it doing what you thought it would do? Beyond, for way sure. way beyond, way beyond. Would you do anything if you could go back one year? Would you do anything different one year ago? Huh. Um, no, I like what I did. Like you're on track. Yeah, I'm past the track, so but, but what about need to build some new tracks. But what are you going to do about medical insurance? I don't know. It's still a mystery. What are you going to do about 401k? Like, not going to have one of those, but yeah. Yeah, all those problems solve themselves when you start making money. It's amazing. So what do you think, what do you see happening in the next six months? Um, I was just talking to Amanda about that. I need to stop doing everything. I'm at a point where I need a person just to, that's the hardest thing for me to do. I was telling her though, what I I've always done is I build systems to make things go faster. I build new things. I've built a lot of stuff. I'm I'm running all the systems and that's not efficient for me. Like I need a new, I need to hand that to someone and say, all right, here's how you do it. Do what I built. I'm going to go build a new one. And that's what growth looks like. So if you're listening to this and you're near, do you have a picture of this employee? Yeah, it, that, was, that was what we were talking about. So it, it can't be a hot, young 30-something girl. Um, Unfo- yeah, unfortunately, the best ones are. Right. And it cannot be. Um, it's not respectful to my wife, and I don't, I don't want any of that. So it's got to be a... I need a fag. Right. Either, of, either that or... A <laughs> like it, like, because if I can say fag... And a gay dude's not that's upset. Right. It's not. That's there's not a homosexual great. person that's going to show up on here taking issue with what I just said. Yeah, I need somebody close to me. Can't be a gum chewer. It's not wearing Crocs because I'm definitely going to step on your feet. I'm probably going to elbow you a lot. Probably in yep. the boob or yep. your man boob. Right. Like I need like okay. that way. There's no like question that. of it. If you can say fag, you can work for me. Yeah. If you can't get through, that's actually a great barometer. That yeah. If you if we have like to that. pussyfoot. Because right. you hear what I say here. Imagine what I say when we're not here. Yep. So, yeah, my I heart is... I was thinking maybe stay-at-home mom that needs something to do with the kid, mm-hmm. right? Flexible hours or uh, retired person or... I have a lot of a, retired people come in here and they're like, I need something to do. Can I assist on the farm? Yeah. Do you have something? And I'm very... Uh, I've, I've really probably shot myself in the foot a lot, right? I've had so many people that I gave tasks to, and then I didn't oversee the task. So I'm always right. like, oh, this is catastrophic. We have a bunch of dead animals or something is, you know, very mm-hmm. askew. Like you leave the homestead with a person and then the water runs all weekend long, right? right. I can, I myself can leave the water on myself sure, and sure. this happened. So you come back and you're like, why is all those wood chips, why are those acres of wood chips all the way down here at the end of the fence and has now knocked the fence over? Like that's mm. a, that's a real thing. Yeah. So when they're like, I want to, I want to come assist and I'm quick to just like, man, I can do this faster myself. I can yeah. do this in 17 minutes rather than the hour it's going to take to deal, to teach you the way I want this done. And every time I teach somebody and, and it would be definitely be different inside of business. You yeah. Know, we, we, We've obviously taught plenty of people yep. how to do Like Amanda should not be in there doing shipping. Yeah, we were just talking about that. Oh, did she voice that? No, I was talking to her. Got it. Stop I, fucking me up. Yeah. You're planting seeds. No, I, I was just uh, asking questions, you know. Uh-huh. Like what? Because that's what I'm discovering is I'm, I only have so many hours. There's not more hours to give, right? So where can I create? I think the answer is innovation, automation. Not always people, but processes. So we're talking about like your belt returns, how we could alleviate some pain. Oh, you had a really good idea. Yeah, stop fucking doing belt returns. Well, yeah, that that'd be the easy one. You're like, why are you doing this? 
Especially for like nope. I ordered the wrong belt. That's different than Yeah, ordered the wrong belt. Okay, whatever. Right. I like I like your drop down menu. And for guys, hey, for guys that don't know, this is Evan Dixon with Radio Made Easy. And uh you yeah. can also find him at Radio's Made Easy That's because right. somebody did that once and he immediately uh executed and bought that domain. Yeah. Own all the misspellings and mispronunciations of uh-huh. your name. And, and like, if you're using a Shopify, it, it shows you all that stuff that's being searched and typed in wrong on yeah. the site, too. Yeah. So, I like it. Um, you've said a lot of things, and I'm like, holy shit, why have we been doing this this well, the, way for 30 years? The reason I had that epiphany, I was sitting there, I had just gotten a bunch of emails about custom programming. So, I offered custom programming because I thought... Well, the largest YouTuber in the world also pronounce the company wrong so you would immediately oh, yeah. buy i know we're talking about two yeah, yeah, different yeah, yeah. things at the no, same you're time right. yep so, but the the thing about the belts was i i just cut that off because i have a pile just like you with belts of people that have sent me their radio to program they didn't buy it from me they bought the radio and sent it to me nobody does custom programming so guess who gets all that work me mm-hmm. um but i detest it because it's a different radio and it's always not always. If you're out there and you sent me one, I'm not necessarily talking about you, but a lot of you guys are the hardest customer to deal with. You've given that, me the least money. Exactly what I was going to say. Yeah. The dude who orders the belt is never the guy that's like, um, I got a ninja emergency and we're taking right. off in the ninja helicopter to the ninja tunnel and right. we're going to fly. It's always it, the resize. It's always the resize guy. Right. And you're like, um, this says 48 inches. Like, I'm sure I need this for deployment. Where are you deploying to? It's toxic green. It's yeah. I went to a golden corral once I had high hopes. Like I saw they had a lot of food you could get and uh, quite the dessert bar. Um, yeah, Yeah. but I mean, most, most chicks that are, you know, doing, um, whatever chicks do at the gym, (laughs) they end up at uh, Starbucks and I'm, I'm like, that's a 1600 calorie milkshake you just ordered. It's a socially acceptable golden corral. It is good though. The, I mean, I don't know about Golden Corral. It wasn't very good when we went, but the, but the Frappuccino. Yeah, sure. I ordered Milk a Frappuccino. Where's my Frappuccino? Milkshakes are good. Yeah, but so the issue for me is that's the biggest time consumer. They they pester me the most. I don't even make a promise when they're getting it back, but they're emailing me immediately, and I that's not what I'm here to do. So I decided to stop it, which is something I should have done immediately or never stop it <laughs> i'm never gonna start i'm gonna be like hey we're not doing um because you know we do see that a lot i sure. when we get a belt return and especially if a dude's like just a uh you know a pest pesting mm-hmm. you know um hey i need this emergency thing i always look it up and you'd be surprised how many guys are buying used belts like leatherman you used to be able to go to the swap meet and yeah, buy a broke leatherman warranty. send it in and get a new one and there's a ton of dudes doing that. They have no other orders. Mm. They didn't even order this thing. They That's bought this cool. thing in the hopes that we would just refresh it because they're trying to save twenty cost bucks. of sh- not even twenty bucks most of the time. Cost of shipping is wow. what like just worried about that five ten bucks. Yeah, it's not the ideal customer. Yeah, so you're right. We should totally. And then I'm going to send them to uh, Andrew. Perfect. Andrew will <laughs> rebuild your belt. And then this is be our, able to pull a car. This is our authorized service warranty. Uh, one of our job. authorized service warranty companies. And I'm going to send them. Smell delicious. We're going to send them to all of our uh, all of our competitors. <laughs> Anybody that perceives themselves. Anyone who, if you order from Andrew, it will be bulletproof and it will smell delicious. Yeah, I always think about that. Like because his wife makes delicious soap. I'm like, man, I hope a dog's never tracking. Them. <laughs> That's what I always think about. Even my stuff. Yeah, it's true. All the like, there's animals. Around yeah, so I always know. think of. I'm like, man, I hope a dog's never trying yeah. to track this guy. So yeah, what do you do with that? You spray it, you know, pressure wash your gear. How do you get the smell out of it? Put it outside. Okay. Like use your shit. Yeah. Like put some blood on it. They'll smell that instead. Sure. Um, so do you have, what frustrations do you currently have? Are you seeing? It is figuring out how to manage a road style, a road lifestyle with an e-commerce business. Guys, for you, for guys that don't realize, like he has been here today and yesterday shipping. He set up, I I watched him set up a table out here. I'm like, why don't you come inside? Like when you guys get shipping, 
through the week coming from anywhere on this dude's the, usually US. with a he's got a truck and a trailer and another vehicle with him in tow and they're yep. processing orders out of these pl- locations where they're teaching classes he does it, it most of that stuff i'll bet 75 percent or more of the orders he ships does not come out of his if, shop if it's been in the last two months it did not come from home on the road so if you guys if you guys want a proper class on how to work this stuff a crash course um He'll come to your location. How many students do you need, ideally? Um, Ten is a good number. And Good, I I'm, like it. I I'm remember gonna, when you were saying six. Yeah, it's not as fun with six. Uh, it's just, it's kind of dry. How many did you just turn out here? Twenty-five. Twenty-five. Twenty-five is getting up there. Yeah. <laughs> For that I place, thought, that final scenario, especially. I, I heard thirty. You saw the chaos. I heard thirty. Well, yeah, that was a miscommunication. It was capped at thirty. So, Joel Salatin, his Uber... In a very nice vehicle, it looked like an Escalade or something. Okay. Lady, real nice lady, came to pick him up, and as she's driving in the driveway, here come twelve dudes with rifles, fucking patrolling and doing hand signals and shit. It's awesome. He's like, I told them you guys were doomsday preppers. Yep. it was awesome. That's what I saw when I went out to get more antennas yesterday. They were all headed for me, and my stomach dropped just slightly for a second. Then it, I realized it's happening. Where I was. It's happening. Here it is. Now my uh, my garage has been taken over right now by a, a patrolling class, so they're doing all their board work and everything. And it's a great uh, class. they were out here running all night long. They're out here right now, and yep. uh, the class will uh, finish up today, and we will have the entire thing back. Yeah, we ran out of the same building Thursday, Friday. Um, first time I've taught with an audience of uh, Giraffe. taxidermied exotic animals. Giraffe eye. Do you think it's a distraction or people got used to it oh, pretty nobody quickly? Nobody notices. Yeah. I'm, I'm definitely, I, I capture their attention once once I start. You really do. But that that's real. Like I yeah. went to that thing. I came out to support you when you did Don Gorham. Yeah. Uh, our friend Don Gorham runs uh, Middle Tennessee Homestead Alliance. And she's got a, she calls it the cannery, but it's a, it's a, it's a barn dominium. It's a very nice awesome. facility. Um, did we just turn off? Is that camera not running? Stand by. I see a red light now. Yeah. All right. Either way, whatever. Just freeze frame us and put audio in. Yeah, we'll be fine. <coughs> um, Don. So, so Don has a, a really nice barn and minimum. And anyways, he came out to do a um, mini presentation. So we came out there and it was, it was great, man. Thanks. Like usually when I sit in a class, I'm fall. If I sit fall, I'm falling asleep, man. That's why sure. I usually stand sure. up when I do lives and stuff. You get a much better um, product from me. Um, if you're standing. Yeah. Cause I'm, cause I gotta, yeah. Oh my God. You know? So, um, but no, man, you definitely, I could sit through your entire class. I could do your class. Yeah, and that's, if you know the content we cover, that is a, that is quite a statement to make because it's not fun stuff. But you do well with it, yeah. though. Your, your presentation, like, yeah, you, you hold them for sure. I, I mean, I think I got some of that from my Christian background. I realized the other day that all the parables Jesus uses, I, you know, I was taught all that stuff, and that's how I teach is metaphors, analogies, relate it to something you can understand and that's what's missing with most technical people is they just jump to the technical and they assume you can come up with the abstraction in your own mind people can't people aren't capable of that you need to hand it to Mm -hmm. them in a consumable way so So i've been challenged to read (laughs) read uh proverbs okay proverbs 17 so today's the 17th so we're reading a day kind of thing yeah and then just and i'm like okay will you do that will you commit to doing that and Uh uh-huh I definitely didn't want to do it. Okay. And I have already forgotten it. But luckily, uh, Bob Lester and Austin both uh, surprisingly hit me both mornings. And Austin's, and um, Bob, especially Bob Lester's, like, okay, I've read it. Let me know when you've read it. We'll discuss it. I've already got my reply. So I went out and Googled it. I'm like, what does Proverbs 17 17 mean? <laughs> and Bob, uh, Bob actually put some thought into it. There you go. Uh, so we've been going back and forth with that. That's cool. There's some wisdom in there. So did you ever preach? Were you a preacher man? I have uh, I've given some talks and sermons, but never regularly. I can't imagine doing that every week. Have you ever ran around and danced around with snakes? No, I've rode a motorcycle into a sanctuary before. A snake sanctuary? No, a, a sanctuary, like a church sanctuary. What is that? Like 
you crashed into no, it or you, it was rode p- it part of the show? No, I remember I told you I did that cross country trip when I was turning 21. So when I got home, um, they, uh, they had me speak mm-hmm. and I rode in. Oh, that's cool. Not many people have. Uh, yeah. They weren't expecting that. Ridden a Suzuki bandit into a, All a right, church. We're, we're going to do it together. Okay. You're in the sidecar. I was hoping I could ride on the back. Oh, we, we can totally do that. I'm gonna need. What should we do? Like KZ850 something. Motorcycle. Yeah. All right. So, yep. have your friends changed at all now since you've started a friends? business? Yeah. Yeah, massively. Well, not that I had any before, but now if now it's people that add value or that challenge me or I actually enjoy. You no. Know, I I, I want to challenge you on that. I think you did have some friends. Yeah. But we, we consider like we're we're considering we're reconsidering what that word means and the value of that word. Well I was right? filtering before that is what I'm getting like with COVID and all uh-huh. we already had oh, some gotcha. filtering, yeah. but yeah. now it's this is a new level of filtering. Uh-huh. But yeah, who if you're if you're in my life it's on purpose now for sure. There's no dead weight. And you're being exposed to different people, yeah, right? And, and we realize, holy shit, there's a these guys live a different way than we live. Yep, that's true. And and the guy who it, a good something that was really stuck with me that will is like when you were riding cross country, you said you were posting on ADV Rider. Yep. And they have this network. When you're riding cross country, you just have these dudes that have that in common, and yep. they're like, "You can stay at my place." Tent space. Yep. Yeah, and you said you would show up at just some a strangers like you are welcome to stay at my place, and you show up, and they've got a six thousand foot garage, and you're yep. like, "You can camp out here." And it's a trip, right? They want nothing for it from you. Yep. You, it, you were have simply met because you have that interest. Shared interest. Yeah. I had nothing but excellent experiences with, yeah. with that community of no, people. No weirdos. Yep. Did you see any weirdos this weekend? Oh, of course. But but benign weirdos, right? Yeah. Oh, totally benign. Yeah. yeah. That's a great word for it. But, yeah, there's always a few that you're like, yeah, there's a few screws loose, but we love you. I wish you would have been there. Like we set up stairs um, Saturday night. I don't. I don't know what night it was. We set up stairs with the band. You know, Sam. Yeah. A slave to servant. Okay, so that's we Sam. knew we knew Sam and God we bus is his Instagram. Okay. He's got a big school bus, and uh, a bunch of us just set up Spearco and and we sat up there and talked. And then the next night we set up there, and then Bear came up and we all had a conversation for quite a while. I wish you would have could have been there. And then when we spoke out here uh when bear and i did which you'll you'll hear the podcast yeah, you'll kind of get an it. idea what's going on yeah because i have not a clue what's going on but something's going on cool. so we're going to do a, a revival of some sort yeah and uh i don't know what that looks like it just kind of started with hey you have a church how many yeah. people can we park right oh you can only park 100 well we're going to need 2000 yeah so we'll see what happens and you said revival. Warned you. you did you did i warned you about revivals I have a field. They become organically, uh, they they continue on without, they become their own thing, you know. it can As long can, as they bring some good food. <laughs> that That is important. I think we'll have some good food. Good. It'll be cool. So, I'm sure you identify non-performance now a lot faster. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. People, because you always have this perception, right? People are always talking about this story and such, and we just believe them i i mean i'm yeah. fast to believe why would i not but yep. then but then when you actually look you find out that it's complete horseshit that's true yep there's there's a lot of people that talk a lot of people with ideas that know how to do a lot of things but i think you have to like anytime somebody's going to do something for you there has to be an exchange of value like yeah. when dudes are just going to take something on their own mm-hmm. you need to be like what does this cost mm-hmm. and can i pay you now for it because once they have the money, because you'll find that they just don't, it doesn't happen. Mm. Whereas if they're not willing to take the money, they probably know they're also not going to do that thing. Huh. That's interesting. Cause I had a, I had a guy place a big order with me, stuff I don't have. And I used to be reluctant to take money ahead first, but now I don't, but I didn't have the insight of that's what's up. I just, I know I'm going to do it. I also don't want to go do all that if I don't know I have the money. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, you're paying. So, yeah, I wasn't even thinking like customer. I was just okay. thinking like business to business sure, services sure. and such. That too. Yeah, I mean, what what I've seen is so far that most people just don't. They're not going to innovate or put the effort in that I do, which is fine. But I want to do a, 
incentive based. I, and I don't know the legalities of this, but we were talking about it when I, when I pitched this to you. So whoever I hire, it's going to be, if you're shipping for me, I'll pay you by the box. I like it. And that's and, and you very, can run as fast as you want to run. You can make as much money as you want to make today. And very much Joel Salatin is the same type of thing. Okay. He's like, we don't, we don't want to sell <clears throat> rabbits. We have an intern come in. <clears throat> they start doing rabbits, and we let them do rabbits, and they pay rent and give us a percentage. So they're multiple... Mm avenues of business on okay. the same property but they're not under his EIN or whatever okay so there's there's some of that I mean it, and, and as a contractor obviously if you're 1099 and people you know That's probably what I'll it, do. it used to be that you could just 1099 people but they're super silly about that once they start looking into you uh, do they have a key do they have access can they come and go do you have a time frame they just make it more and more and more difficult okay. you almost have to be your own business doing business to business. I see. They make it very fucking difficult. But then again, not on the radar, not on the radar. Sure. Yeah, I think that's how I will try to set it up. And ideally, they'll be making great money where mm -hmm. it's like the, I, I will keep the, I will overpay them because they're excellent. So that's what Frisella said. He said, you almost have to pay somebody twice what they're worth so that they know when they're messing up, they cannot go someplace else and get an equivalent job that's going to right. pay as much. Makes them a little bit insecure. Yep. Yeah. And he said something to the effect, which I've kind of evolved. You almost have to hire four people that are going to be quarter performance okay. to equal one winner. person. No, oh, to, I mean, to equal one person. Yeah, like my, and, and you <laughs> constantly hear from people who have never run businesses. This is You see it all over social media. One, letting a bad employee stay really drags down the performance of the rest. And yes, maybe it does. Mm -hmm. And I like to point out that while we have two or three half performers, mm -hmm. every single thing they do is something you don't have to do today. Sure. And as an employee, they don't look at the I bottom have. line. They don't. They just look at what's happening out here, and this person's just super slow. Yeah, we can ride them. We can weed them out. We can kick them out. But I mean, and that's probably something that what you were talking about managing the property that really applies to that. Too, absolutely, right? you can do it faster and better, but you still have to do it. Yeah, I can't walk and away from it. Yeah, and that that's not sustainable. Yeah, I can't. And I, and that was one of the big things. Like when Joel and I sat down, I think we went for over two hours. Really? I can't and I asked him, that. I asked him those questions, questions I'd never heard asked. How many people actually run the farm every day? How many of those people are actually your people yeah. versus employees or, and how does your intern program work? How do you select your interns? Oh, yeah. um, how do you that. house your interns? And what kind of problems have you had? And he okay. immediately is like, well, obviously we house women and men separately. We okay. do have a couple where there are husband and wives. Yeah. So they, we have housing for them. What kind of problems have you had with housing and zoning mm -hmm. and such? And he went, he went quite a bit into there. He had some insight I hadn't ever thought of on that. Um, oh, that's awesome. And then. Um, what a dude to get to talk to. Yeah. And there was a, there was a few, oh, what, what do you do when the department of making you sad shows up, right? What do we do when it's the EPA or, or health inspector or whatever? And, yeah. and I'll, I'll say right now, so everybody can hear this, cause I think it's very important, whether it's a law enforcement or anything, uh, number one, do you have a warrant? And number two, um, send it certified to me in writing, right? Don't have any communication. You are not allowed to leave your vehicle, stay in your car, do not get out of your car because he said a lot of times it'll slow him down for a year or two. And most times it goes away because they are just on a fishing expedition on their own right. to build a name. It's almost like they have to go out and develop their leads. Oh, most people incriminate themselves with this. Correct. That's right. Yeah. I don't answer talking. questions. I can't yeah. wait. Have you been traveling? Are you traveling, officer? I smell marijuana, officer. There's have no you been drinking? Light. Where are you heading tonight? What? Where are you coming from? There's no red light. Oh, imagine that. All right. Well, whatever. There's no red light on the camera. We have the sound. Okay. He's going to put up a really nice picture of you and I. Should I we arm? Should, should we give him a screenshot of armor? Oh, I understood you. I'm just done fucking with it. I understand. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't want you to think I was talking about the cop that. Had no, the red I light. got you. I understood. <laughs> I got you. Yeah. I think that that piece of it. You know, I get that from fighting pistol too. But there's just don't run your mouth like and that doesn't apply to just when you just shot somebody it's like when you get pulled over don't answer any non-essential question they're not your friend they're not there to help you i'm just having Be a vigilant having a polite conversation right i was sitting um at a restaurant months ago and there was a lot of law enforcement at the table next to us there was a sheriff from two different municipalities okay. um there was i don't think there was a state trooper there but there was some police officers from a couple departments mm-hmm 
And I heard this dude, he's like, yeah, we just went to some awesome training, man. And what they told us is uh, you ask them to step back here, get them out of the vehicle. <clears throat> and that leak puts them out of the vehicle. And now you have them captive, basically. Mm. And uh, we can we can just pat you down on the way, even though we don't have any suspicion of a crime. We're going to go ahead and for officer safety, everything's officer safety. Mm. So once they're back here, you cannot not consent. Right. That you have that feeling, right? And your vehicle most of the times it's is open. Yeah, proof. and a lot of times your phone's sitting there as well. And they'll yeah. go they'll go through all your shit. Don't like just don't get out of the vehicle. Yeah. I have a good friend that he his girlfriend was traveling with him. They were doing transporting something they shouldn't have been. Okay. And there was no reason for that to ever be discovered until she she gave consent mm. and spent time in prison for it. Both of them. Yep. Are they together still? Heck no. Mm. Did he get a consolation prize when he came home from her or anything? I don't know about that. Weird. Yeah, I mean, just keep your mouth shut and don't, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's there's plenty of stories where dudes weren't doing anything illegal, and they have gone, they have they've fucking went to jail over it. Sure. You're, I mean, one way or another. You don't even have to be doing anything wrong. They'll find it. Yeah, and most of it is, like, when you, when you give any pushback, it's re retribution. It's retaliation at yeah. that point, First Amendment retaliation. So you ask for it in writing if they're a... Uh, that's what he said. Yeah, I need, I need just, I don't understand. Another good, another one too is, I don't understand you. Right. I'm, I'm sure that you believe what you're saying is right, but I don't understand you. Could you send that to me in writing? Mm. That works. There's I, a, t I there's did it in Nicaragua once. There's a because there's a ton of them. Um, like there's a ton. I'm, I watch these videos. They just roll because I you know, do pay attention yeah, yeah, to yeah. it. And uh, a lot of it's like when law enforcement comes to the house, uh, can can we come in? No, you can't. Is so-and-so here? If you don't, they can't bust the door down. They don't have a warrant. Right. They need you to provide that consent. Yeah, yeah. And they are looking, and the more and you talk. they sure don't give you any clues about that. No. No, they, yeah. You feel like you are at their mercy. There's a dude, I can't remember his name, and he's done some some really good, like, movies, videos. And uh -huh. he's got a 90-minute coming out about just in the last, I think it's the last three years, uh, the power law enforcement in the United States has gained and the powers that we have lost as um, Americans. And I think that's an important thing, too, when you talk, we are Americans, we are not citizens. Um, and, and, I mean, that's a, that's a whole yeah. rabbit hole. Well, there's a good book, uh, Rise of the Warrior Cop, I think it's called, where it talks about the militarization of police and where, the history of that, where it, how it started in the U.S. to how it got here. And really the drug war is what mm -hmm. launched it because they got all of this money yeah. from seizures and then could buy military stuff. To and then it's graft, seizures. yeah, graft. And, and it, it just, just keeps going and growing. going. It, it's hard to imagine that it wasn't always like that because it's not – Unfam like in my little town, police wear plate carriers. We have an M ramp up here. Like that's my my whole life. That's what it's looked mm -hmm. like. It's hard to believe that there was like a a Barney Fife history in. And I, and town. I get it as law enforcement man. If I, I, I was, too. If I was a cop, I'd I'd be. I mean, shit. I there, there's some WalMarts we go to in Atlanta. I'm like, man, I wish I had a fucking armor carrier on right now. Yeah. Well, I you know I may or may not roll with. Stuff As you like should. that around, but sure. there's a there's there's a statement being made, that whether you mean to or not, that there's that we are you know it feels like you're being ruled. You are being ruled. Yeah. That is exactly That's it. Not, there is a separation in class between them and you. Yeah. And how dare you question my authority? That is right. that is absolutely. And I know we're going to get to tell somebody that's up at your window. I don't answer questions when they're decked out like that. If they look like me and you, you might not feel quite so nervous oh yeah there's a good chance i mean yeah. and there's a ton of those too when you're like hey get me i need to speak to your supervisor right and then they show up but you're going to be on the side of the road for hours That's with this be a bad day for everybody you're going to get you're going to be on the side of the road for hours and a lot of them end with get the fuck out of here because they're going to do shift change and they don't want the paperwork that's going to sure. come from it but there are man there are lot thousands and thousands of lawsuits being settled over this stuff wrongful detention yeah. that are and they're Guys are getting million, and that's There's what they people that make a living off of provoking it. I'm sure, yeah, probably, yeah. I mean, and that's what the law enforcement guys think. I mean, I can see that. Oh, you're just you're, here, you're just here for views. They have this misconception that because we're videoing it, we're making money off of it. Like all that stuff's unmonetized. Like, have you seen that viral video of the guy that got famous who told Joe Biden, "You work for me." <laughs> uh, um, I do recall that. It's like a, he he kind of got famous from it. Um, but that is the, 
that's hard to imagine saying that to the president. It's also hard to imagine saying it to a cop, but it's true. Yeah, it is. Like, and so get your mind right. They it work is. for us. And it doesn't mean you need to be hostile either or nasty or hate them. I don't mean any of that either, but uh, you can have a, a – it is interesting they chose a profession like that, right? We could probably infer some things about a person that this day and age chooses – to go do that enthusiastically now. Well, I think, I think a young man <clears throat> can go into that truly believing that he's going to make a difference. Yep. And I think once they get in there, they're like, oh, oh this is not, yeah, just like going into politics. But um, if you then stay, but, but, and it is make a, you into what you, what they yeah. are. And it, and it also is adventure. I mean, it's exciting, sure. right? Like being a fireman. Or, oh, yeah. you know, police officer. That's Those were the exciting jobs as a every young child. Kid, yep. Right. Yep. So. Well, they. it's not what you think it is. But and now they're taking, like, if you test too high on the IQ score, they discard you. Right? Really? They want yes men. They mm -hmm. pushed who was most likely to not take the thing. Right? Mm -hmm. right? Those were the oath keepers, people that believed in the Constitution. Right. They were pushed out. I mean, Chicago is a great example. They, mm -hmm. they retired all those or early retired, forced really? them out. And then they hire a bunch of yes men and you've got mm -hmm. all these young people. And now you have all these municipalities that have brought in so many non-U.S. citizens. Mm -hmm. They're actually handing, they're actually give, putting them and making them law enforcement. Wow. Non-U.S. citizens here illegally. How is that? I wonder how they even carry any authority as an, a non-citizen. Well, that's what Scully said. Scully's like, then as your field training officer and they give you one of these illegal aliens, it is your job to go straight to the jail and lock them up. Right, Although, like, otherwise, just go, <laughs> go, go take a nap under a bridge, oh, boy. And they, Those and, guys aren't there, though. And they took such an issue with that. Really? Yeah, on the comments. Those, that was one of our really? high. It's still going. Yeah, it just went up a few weeks ago. Well, uh, most people like the taste of boot still. Well, it was we, now the short was done in a manner of oh, it's provoking. Go, go take a, a nap, yeah, yeah. and they're like, "I'm a cop, and I don't right. take a nap." Yeah, I mean, I there's there's very few people. It's a generational gap there that, that is gonna the respect and the admiration for that line of work. It, it will end at a certain. I point. would like to see the new the new law enforcement officer. I'd like to see a study of how many are fatherless homes mm. versus you know how many how many new father how many new grandfather mm. what kind of path was that set on? And then I'd also like, like to see how many like who joins gangs. Yeah, well, it's a gang. Yeah. Oh, it absolutely so, so is a yeah. gang. Yeah, they hate it when you say that. I've not said any of these things. I have friends that are law enforcement. I've not had. Well, they're probably not the people we're talking about. Correct. There I've are not, exceptions to all rules. Yeah, I've not had negative interactions with law enforcement. Yep. I've not. But right. I'm also not traveling. I'm not moving around sure. a lot, right? Sure. So I'm not getting pulled over often. But if you objectively define what is a gang. Right, like oh, hundred percent. They collect their money from the surrounding neighborhood by yeah. force. When, they use intimidation. They all wear matching outfits. When like we are harassing the working man, the same. when we are hiding in a spot to catch a man traveling to and from work, clearly, when the factories have let out, that's an issue. Right. Like, do we not have some place to, to gain revenue right. when the revenue for the city is to write tickets? When you have a highly impoverished town. With brand new cruisers, yeah, that come yeah. that comes from stealing money from the citizens, which looks like a gang that, you know, they, dude, they had they had they drive around. I cool didn't hear, and, uh huh. You know. I didn't hear about it this time, but we had we had highway patrol out here the last several times pulling people over coming to and from here for SRF. Yes, wow, yeah, hmm. they they had a, a heightened law enforcement presence. Well, which is bizarre. I don't know why that would that would be. Well, I mean, it's uh, un people are, if you think of it from a revenue standpoint, it's an untapped market, right? There's a bunch of people driving through the middle of nowhere. They're going to have their True. guard will be down, so we'll be able to catch some. On the other hand, we bring we bring wildlife. a thousand bodies in here that are going to spend money in this economy. Right. They're going to, from you're going, everywhere else. you're going to see a tax spike, a, a yeah. sales tax spike here in this area yeah. that's, that's going to be not enough. A hundred X fold over what sure. it normally is. Yeah, it's, stuff's got to change. But in the meantime, I'll just uh, 
Yeah, I'm not changing the world. I'm trying to run a business. But. You seem like you're raising your kids very well, man. I think you, you are changing the world. Like I, I look at way. several of you guys that are here yeah. with with kids, man. And I'm like, man, I should have I should have done better. Oh, well, it's as the answer to changing the world is yourself and your kids. That's about as far as you can probably go. Yeah, you keep hearing the you're special, and you can be bigger than that. But how do we affect the culture war, right? So you yeah. hear the big guys, Tim Pool, and these, and right. like have babies, and that that makes all the sense in he the world. He says that. Yeah. How many babies has he got? He doesn't. Okay, what's the deal with that? But that that is the answer. Jordan, is the answer. Jordan Peterson, right? He's very yeah. influenced. He's, you know, those guys all yeah. run in the same Molyneux. circles. So, yeah, Molyneux. Yeah, so nobody even me. knows Molyneux. You He's know, Spearco, you know, Spearco actually interviewed Molyneux, had right. him on the show, I think twice. He's who got my mind right about kids. Mm -hmm. he, his whole mission is peaceful parenting. We should be taking care of kids. They're the most exploited group of people on the planet. Here's how we should treat them, and here's how we change the world. Is we don't, we don't teach them to respond to authority that hasn't earned its place and illegitimate authority, mm -hmm. things like that. So yeah, I've I think we need a to take it. Advice. I think we need to go a step further, and it's not it's not just the kids. I think it's multi generational. Yeah, right. And how do, how do we? We no longer mind because they no longer right. matter, right? Like that. And it doesn't have to be a compound. It doesn't have to be 10 acres. It could be one acre. It could be 100 acres, right? Mm -hmm. But the, the dream really, especially when you get older and you have children, and you're, we, I heard that we spend, uh, they spend the first eight years of their life chasing us for attention, and mm -hmm. we spend the rest of their life chasing them for attention. Right. So Think it, about Mom and dad that never, you never go back to visit that. Kind, that's what you mean. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So if we can have a property large enough to have multiple home sites or homesteads, mm -hmm. right? It doesn't have to be under one roof, but what if you, let's say a small village, right? Let's say we have just an acre, two acres of property and you have tiny houses, but you have a common meeting place where you have uh, the kitchen and the dining room and we still meet for dinner, right? Yep. And we stop warehousing our elderly, right? We, yep. keep, we keep the grandparents on site in some manner so that when we do have kids, the grandparents can help raise those kids so that we can go spend time with our wives, Absolutely. right? And then when our grand, when our children have kids, we can Here's do the same. Favor. Yeah, and like Bear has, Bear has um, mother-in-law, great, you know, old grandma living on the property. Yeah. She's a wealth of knowledge. So when okay. I say we call it prepping, grandma called it Tuesday, the things we're trying to learn right now that we spend every weekend canning and going to the farmer's market and producing food, they just did it as a way of life. Right. Like, like most people don't have access to a farmer, right? I get up at 4.30 in the morning. Woohoo! Every farmer is up at 4.30 in the morning. That's not an accomplishment. We just don't develop those lines of communication and those relationships yeah, what, with those men what you are describing was normal not that long uh, not ago. long ago yeah and that's that people like to rag on boomers and they're, they're a big punch line right okay boomer but what happened with boomers is it skipped them mm -hmm. so they were that first generation that did not pass on culture did not pass like the world changed so much so rapidly that they it just quit working do you know what happened? I don't. I don't have a pinpoint. No. But so the you world can got trace it where you can see right around that time. The world got super easy, right? right. Liberal liberals okay. typically work a job and they don't want kids, right? When society, when money is good mm -hmm. and everything's easy, nothing pounces on you, right? We always have water. People don't pay their electricity. We no don't hardship. turn. Yeah, there's no hardship. There's not. They've not been pressure tested, so right. things are easy. Though they don't want to have they kids. Grew up in a time of plenty, but that skipping costs us so much it did. Like, there's stuff i have to learn the hard way yes that i shouldn't have right to learn the that hard means way. we have to make it up a hundred times yeah, i agree and that's our that's our duty and our responsibility uh, that's why i have my kid being running a business here at i had every okay so his daughter made some cards with combat cocks on them and one of them was a birthday card some are greeting cards and she showed them to me and i should have bought them right then but i wanted her to do business right so some people bought those my intention was to make an announcement and i dean threw me off with yeah, the picture i missed that so i wanted to be like hey who bought those greeting cards i want to buy them back yeah. because my intention was to buy them back and then pay her again for them okay and i didn't get that I opportunity scott hassan got one Good. That's a good person to have. And it. maybe he will, Neithy. 
because they'll cherish it. Those yeah. those it was will only stay people someplace. that knew what it was. Yeah. yeah, they they are good people. So I gave her twenty bucks anyways. Thank you. So I said, "What are you doing with this she money?" She made eighty bucks. Wow, as a five year old. So she said, "I said, what are you doing with this?" She says, uh, "Daddy's going to buy a bouncy house if I get a hundred dollars." And I said, "And then you're going to pay people I have to pay you to jump on it?" She says, "No, I'm just going to jump on it with my friends because yeah. uh, I picture you starting a bouncy house business That's or something." It's be. It is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can't buy one for a hundred bucks. No, she oh no. She she doesn't have a comprehension of a dollar or a hundred dollars. I did find a roller coaster for five thousand dollars. Really? Yeah, it's all taken apart, which means we'll probably never get it back together. That's not something I would want to risk. It would look cool sitting on the hill, though. It would. It would. I also saw a McDonald's playground for sale. Uh, those are all gone. I want to. I've. I've never pulled the trigger. I want the creepy uh, Ronald McDonald on the bench. Okay. I see that them come up frequently. Creepy. We saw two cast iron Bob's Big Boys. Oh, really? Yeah, I didn't have a way to bring them home, so I didn't buy them. They're still huh. sitting there. Yeah, she. so that what I did with her, though, is she, she loves to draw. Like, she will just use a ream of paper drawing just constantly. So I was like... All right. Well, I don't, and she likes make when she found out about Valentine's Day two years ago. <laughs> she made Valentine's cards. She loves to draw hearts. She loves love. Right? Like mm-hmm. it's just she's a girl. She's all girl, and it's precious. So I'm. How do we cultivate this? All right. Well, if you're gonna make cards all the time, let's make some cards for real. So got her a hundred sheets of good card stock and said, you know, make a couple every day, and you can sell them at the festival with me. Do your kids know what Halloween is? Mm, kind of they know there's a day you dress up okay yeah we've only done it like at a friend's house where we just okay but we we don't i don't like doing creepy stuff with the kids okay because the creepy stuff people joke about i know is real Mm -hmm. so yeah (laughs) no doubt yeah i'm not wanting to play around with witches and ghosts and goblins Mm -hmm. when that's a real thing that you guys do do you do christmas yeah, um, not 100% traditional. I make a gift for every kid for Christmas, and that's what they get from us. What do you, what but everyone else brings? The, do you have an example? Like, what would you make? Um, so last year I made radios for both girls. So I paint, I took oh, that's them right. You did them in the colors. Them. The year before that, I made a rocking horse and um, like a pickler's triangle that they climb on. So I always build something mm-hmm. or make something. That's getting increasingly more difficult. I actually got that from Wrangler Star though. He he was he used to do videos making things for the kids, and I was like, I want to do that. So I did. But I wanted to make Christmas about Christmas, not about what's your list. Mm-hmm. Um, their birthdays, we go hard. Like you're gonna get a lot of stuff for your birthday. It's gonna rock. But Christmas is about the traditions and obviously the faith element. Um, but it's it's not. Not the same as uh, write your list out for Santa. We don't do Santa. Okay. We don't lie about Santa. Yeah, I was just just absolutely yeah. curious. I, no I was literally in the shower, do. and I don't know why. I'm like, because I have all the pumpkins. Yeah. And I'm like, we forgot to call this car the pumpkins. And then I'm like, I wonder if Evan's kids do Halloween. Yeah. Because I was thinking the cards, you know. Yeah. she They like fall and, you know, mm-hmm. dressing up. They don't, but it's a. I don't feel like condemnation toward people that do that stuff. But here's the deal for me. I don't want to do things unconsciously. Like, I don't want to do things on accident or because everyone does it. I, I want to think about it and believe in it. Somebody said the other day, I think we were on podcast and I was re-listening to it, and they said, <clears throat> I said, do you do, do you something? And he goes, no, we don't do what other people do. If other people do it, we don't do it. <laughs> and I don't remember who that was, but it's in my head still. Well, that's kind of taking it a different angle i i'm not trying to be a rebel i'm really not and i'm not doing it to lord over someone who does it's more Mm -hmm. i want to think about it and if i was gonna do it you know do i want to do it or do i believe in it is this so like with christmas it's you know is is that something that we want to do i want to deceive my children for eight to twelve years about something miraculous okay yeah and then expect them to still believe in other miraculous things that are real. Because I know my experience is, I, I, you know me, right? So I was this guy at eight, and I saw a Nerf Big Bad Bow in the back seat of the van one day. I saw it. I made, put eyes on it, and I thought, if Santa brings that, I know Santa's not real. Now, I was a Santa, a Santa evangelist. Uh-huh. 
Like all the kids that said he wasn't <laughs> real, I was out there defending Santa like Jesus. Got it. So okay. I was pissed. Yeah, I found when I found out it was a deception, and I don't want to. Why it. do that? I found model trains. Okay. Yeah, in a spare room. Yeah. And did you make a mental note and then see who brought it? Or I think I, I think I don't remember how old I was, but I think I kind of already knew that it was yeah. mom and dad. Oh, I wanted to believe it was true because of all the other things I believed, mm-hmm. and so I don't. I don't know if it'll make a difference, but to me, I don't want to be deceptive about something on purpose. I could see the argument that you're taking all the fun out of it, and I see that. But it's, you're not taking fun out of it if it was never instilled falsely, right? Right. Exactly. And you're doing an amazing every time I see them. Just the just the fact that they're here and they're little people and they. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I your kid. It. How I don't know. How old is your daughter? Your Five. oldest? Five. Yeah. We sat down at a restaurant. And he gave her a book, and she just sat there and read the whole book. Yeah. She taught herself to read because we read to her so much. That's awesome, man. But that's not us. That's part, it is us, but it's partly, you just get, the, you win the lottery sometimes genetically. I mean, you can't make that happen. So it's not, there's no illusion that I somehow put the right recipe together. I helped, but. Are you going to have any more kids? Uh, we're not planning on it. Okay. We're not actively trying. Yeah. A three fit in a truck, so um, <laughs> three and us, uh, five of us in a pickup pulling the trailer is a good number. If it changes from that, things get a little more complicated. Who has the other vehicle that's here? That's not yours? Um, Hannah's got the van, and I've got my truck. Got it. So you brought two of your yeah. vehicles. And that's part of what you were saying earlier is, like, I literally have to do that because I have to bring my entire business everywhere I go because I can't be down for five days. But you're pressure tested. You know what that looks like, man. I sent you that picture when we were in Colorado. I was like, this is what I'm going to be remembering next time somebody says they can't do something. Here I am with nine totes on a picnic table in Colorado shipping orders. And that's when guys ask questions, I'm like, you have the answer to everything. We didn't even have the internet when we started. We, you couldn't just electrically send me money. Right. We had, we had to get a piece of paper or cash and take it to the bank. Yeah, we're so. And this half is the time, the best they time to be alive. And when you had real money, right? When when somebody sent you some real money, thousands of dollars, and you're like, "Man, here we go, we're in business." Oh. Your, your damn bank won't give you the money. Yep, <laughs> yep. <laughs> I was I used that in my talk that you you anticipated something similar when we did that big project that not to send it through PayPal. Um, but yeah, I got I got hit pretty hard by PayPal when. I did a big project with Wrangler Star. They shut me off at twenty grand. I have my PayPal unlinked. We're not taking money through PayPal. I don't do business through them either now. Um, but yeah, that that's a so build your arc. Have a have a backup yep. plan because at any second. And you keep preaching that to me yep. with the website. Yeah. Well, and it's I I thought about you a lot when I was giving my talk about that's what I spoke on at SRF, which surprised uh the mc because he thought i was going to talk about radios i actually don't really care as much about radios as who were, problems, was that tim or spags him yeah but uh i talked about you know how to become cancel proof and part of it is just having a plan it's not necessarily moving yet it's back up all your stuff have your product library backed up have your customer list so if and when you have to move all the things that were easy five minutes ago are really hard to do after you're shut down. So it's just, just like prepping, right? It's like you can get gas now and save it. You can get food now and save it. You can learn it on the fly, but that's not the day right, to be right. learning. So it's the same principle. But On the worst day, we're probably going to have other problems that are going to preclude you from growing a garden. Well, and the real trick is can you, even if you can get it back or you can figure out how to pivot, can you afford can you weather that storm, right? Like, can you afford to be down for a week? It might be the end. Yeah. Right? So I hope some people got something. From yeah. That. Problems come in three all the time too. Yeah. Yeah. There's something to that for sure. I don't, I don't look forward to those, but I do know that those are the times I do look back on and I'm proud of myself later, but God, it's so those are the stories we're talking about. We <laughs> yeah. don't, we don't talk about the, I got this. We, right. we, we talk about that big amount of influx of money on yeah. that big order. Well, yeah. we only talk about it because the banks yeah, locked us up and stuff. wouldn't give it to us. Right. It's not ever the, um, 
oh man, this was great. And I was able to get a new building and I got a new building and brought in some new equipment. Yeah. And we just hired some more people. There's always a glitch in there and it's always the glitch that you use as a teaching moment. Have you heard about the hero's journey and how all stories follow this pattern of... So tell me about it. I, I don't have a perfect uh, summary, but essentially there's there's always a, a central character, right? And he's encountering a problem and there's the... There's his his coming of age, his becoming a man story of having learning, going through the suffering, and then going to the battle, winning over the the woman or the love interest, right, and then the the rising action and the falling action. Mm-hmm. So this pattern that the hero's journey, you can look it up, but it's a uh, almost every good story follows this. So when you watch a movie or read a book, there's this framework. Yep. That all good stories follow and we want that for ourselves, right? There's some there's some magic to that that calls to our hearts. So Rogan says live your life as though it's a movie. Live your life as though there's a camera following you around right. because you will act different. Sure. There is no superhero story without the downfall, right? right. Nobody's going to watch a movie where this dude just has some superpowers. Everybody wants to know yep. what terrible thing happened to yep. him, right? I have a, we, you and I have a friend and he says, man, I can't execute. I just can't do great things. I don't think I've had enough t- problems. I have not had enough trauma in my life. Yeah. And I said, do not speak that into existence. Like sure. you don't want that man. When you open that up, I used to say the same thing. Yeah. You're opening a portal Yeah. and something's going to come through it that you're going to live with the rest of your life. Well, yeah, I don't, I don't know if you have to open it, it'll come, but yeah, I I agree. I I remember thinking as a kid hearing in church, hearing these radical testimonies of people who had gotten off of drugs or been an alcoholic or, you know, whatever. And then they got saved, everything solved. And I was like, man, I got a really boring story. And then that that all changed. Mm -hmm. So I think, uh, yeah, there's something to that, but I wouldn't change it, man. I'm glad I had to go through the ringer. So we got to jump off of here in a minute. So give okay. them give them some last words here. Okay. Um, well, if you are, if you find yourself bored, you find yourself um, not inspired by your life, and you're not you're not happy, you're not excited to do what you got to do. Uh, you should change that. You should go shake that up or it'll be shaken for you. Yeah. So. You can, you can do it or somebody will do it. Yeah. Right. It had to be a little of both for me, but man, I, I feel like I have found like the secret. Like, it's like, I don't know. It's like a veil got lifted when I was like, okay, this is a different way of living. And I cannot believe it took me 34 years to realize I didn't have to work for somebody I could build and no shade at my employers. Right. They were awesome but I'm not built for that. And if someone would have just told me, dude, you're brilliant. Like go do, go do this. This is way better. And there's all these cool things that can happen. Yeah. If you're hearing this and you think that uh, that's you, it probably is. And you need to don't go do a side hustle. Don't try to roll it slow. The paycheck plantation. Go. Yeah. Get off the plantation for sure. That's the the version of that I can stand, not a Candace Owens version. I haven't heard hers, but I like I like yours. I thought yeah, it was yours. Yeah. Um, show up as the man the world needs. Yeah. When dudes are like, "How do I how do I get a good woman?" You have to be a good man first. You have yep. to show up as the man she needs. If you picture yourself with her, and don't don't picture the one you can get. Picture the whatever that is you want. And I'm not saying physical appearance, right? Sure. But show up. As the man, you picture the woman you want deserving. And I got, I got yep. that from Wes Watson, right? Show up, give the world the man that they need. Mm-hmm. And when they said, like, how, do you, how did you get here? What do you do? And he's like, it's not as much what I do. It's what I don't do. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, if you want to find a good woman, you better have a good life to invite her into. I'll, yeah, that's you. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Yeah, you better have something to give her. Yeah, and if not, that's, uh, that's not going to happen. But, yep, you're a... Uh, I hope I hope this becomes contagious. I think it is, but I don't want to, you know, much like you kind of cultivate people and spot the winners and help build them up. I hope we can I hope that continues to just I don't spot the become winners. Contagious. I don't spot the winners. Really? Mm-hmm. You just wait to see the win- the winner rise up out of the Anybody the that has a conversation with me, I give them all the same thing. Okay. I well, just the ones that perform, right? I, I want more time with them. Okay. 
Well, I hope we find. And, more and usually, I don't. Ones. Usually, usually people that are my best, like close friends, people in the circle, they just I kept pushing them away, and they just wouldn't leave. They just kept coming back. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for not I, pushing me away. I don't know how to build I things like being your friend. James had patience. I don't have. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. Well, well I, thank you I for enjoy it, and I'm grateful. Thank you for being here, man. Yeah. Thank for what a fourth time now. Yeah. Fifth time, sixth time. Oh, for the podcast, yeah. Well, well, just even here. No, I'll be here often and early. Uh, like voting. Yeah. Yeah, like voting should be. <laughs> hey.